So have you guys worked with Cardio House before? You haven't used it? No? You have, yeah? Very familiar, a little bit? Pretty familiar with it, okay. Um, I'm gonna start this by actually having you guys come on to the side, I guess. So we can just see the front of the screen and we'll kind of go through things on the Cardio Help. Cardio Help has your flow, negatives, and then you're gonna have your uh, pre and post, okay? This is a lock screen, you just tap both to get into it, okay? When it goes on, it's gonna be, it will alarm at you. I'm just gonna show you alarming. And the way that you stop the alarm as you're trying to prime it, should beep any second. See, so you can do a global override. So you're gonna hold the S and you're gonna tap this, okay? Turns off all your alarms. So it's not beeping like crazy when you're trying to prime it up, okay? After that, the other parameters that you're gonna see is you're gonna see your, uh, where we go here? It doesn't show anything because if I put it on, it won't read it. Okay. But what you have here is you're gonna have your uh, arterial and your venous temperatures, and you're gonna have your crit and your hemoglobin and your SVO2. Mm -hmm. Shows all your stuff, okay? Just going through things here. Just going through things here. Uh, we're gonna have, this is what we call um, transport mode, it just if you need to see things bigger. This was made to transport, so that's why it's so small, portable, okay? And then um, you got a lock screen so that you can't touch the screen. And then what you're also gonna have is your power button. If you hold it long enough, it'll go, oh, I'll show you. It'll turn off, okay? Comes all the way off. See this big red button here? Everyone always goes to turn that off. It will turn it off eventually if you wanna go that route. But you hold it 10 seconds. So it's a lot longer than if you do it up here. It's an emergency shut off. If you hold it for five seconds, it puts it into an emergency override. That's useful for if this screen cracks or stops functioning. And let's say your flow stops at that point. You hold this for five seconds, it goes into emergency override. And then what you're gonna do is you can control the knob and it'll still flow, but that is all it'll do. This isn't working for you, just your knob up and down, up and down, okay? Um, this is gonna be your hand crank. Looks like any other hand crank that you've ever seen, I'm sure. You're just gonna put it into here. Um, and in that scenario, I guess we'll have you all do it in a little bit, but uh, that'll be from like a pump failure if you need to go through that. Obviously, if the cone is clotted, you have to switch out the whole pump. You can't just start cranking away. It's not going to do anything, right? Um, so I'm going to go through how I usually identify a problem with uh, ECMO, and then I have a, like a little algorithm that I just go through. So typically, the most common thing you'll see is some sort of pinched, pinched venous line. I've occluded it right here and you'll see the negatives come up, right? This is the most common thing. What you'll usually see is some sort of chugging when it'll look more like this, where it's going up and down and your flows are kind of going up and down, right? Uh, there's lots of different scenarios that, that can happen, but what you have to do as a perfusionist is basically turn it down, okay? If it doesn't go away, then you're gonna have to say, okay, what is my issue, right? It's something with the venous cannula. Maybe you need more volume, maybe you need more, um, it, or you need to change the uh, position of the cannula. Uh, there's lots of things that could be happen, but you know that if you see the negatives high and your pressure's low, that there's something wrong there, okay? Whether it's volume or cannula position. And the next thing I always look at is if my flow goes down, right? If my flow is down, but my negatives are not down, something else is happening, right? So negatives is always the first I go to because it happens the most often. If that's, say, eight, then I go look at my flow, okay? We're at zero. Why are we at zero? I still have a pressure, though. That means that my arterial can is can't, right? Just an in-and-out system, okay? And then the last thing is gonna be, if you uh, have them all go down, which I can only show this way, right? So you go look at your negatives, it's zero. You look at your flow, zero. You look at your pressures, both is zero, caught it off, or it's malfunctioned, right? Um, malfunctioning, you'd be able to basically not be able to turn this up or down, or it'd be shut off, or a black screen, or whatnot. Um, but uh, from a clotted point of view, basically you'd turn this up and you just wouldn't see anything happening, or you'd hear it. A lot of times you can hear a whining of some sort uh, going on. Okay, so that's the, the parameters of the car, it'll help. Uh, and then I guess we can start doing a little bit of hands-on stuff. I'll show you how that how I de-air stuff. We wanted to kind of do de-airing for this situation, and then you'll try an oxygenator change out for over there. Um, with de-airing here, there's only three ways that it'll really happen, right? First one's the cannula comes out. In that scenario, 
all you're going to do is you're going to clamp it off. You have to wait for a surgeon anyways, right? So you're going to clamp it off, and you're just going to wait. You're probably going to have to get a new circuit. Okay. So that's not a scenario that you're really going to have to de-air. The next one's going to be if you have some sort of bridge in line, and that bridge is under negative pressure. And this is the most common way that people deprime their circuits. A lot of people will put a manifold between the arterial and the venous side. And if they leave that stopcock open, we don't have one here. I was like, do you yeah. have one? No, no, we don't have one here. Yeah, yeah. We don't have quite everything that we would like. I would yeah. like this on a pole, like, you know, I'd like some other things, but we're just managing here. Um, yeah, but so at one of my facilities, basically, we'd put a connector in here on the venous side, and we'd run a, a small shunt across the way so that you'd be able to pull any sort of gases that you want. Problem is, once every four months, five months, six months, whatever it would be, someone would turn the stopcock the wrong way under negative pressure. Five seconds later, that thing's be primed. So that's going to be the one that you're probably going to have to deal with the most if you ever have negative pressure on your ECMO circuits. And then the third one is a little more obscure, but um, sometimes nurses will leave a stopcock open on their central lines. And if you have enough negative pressure on this, it can pull from the negative line all the way into your cannula to the pump. And that's usually more of a micro air situation. It doesn't completely deprime. You'll see it kind of bubbles kind of coming through here and slowly accumulating. It's not going to take your complete uh, uh, pump out. Okay, So those are three ways. Um, I guess we will start with de-airing just because I talked about it a bunch. And then afterwards, we'll kind of go to the hand crank because that's kind of a simple thing. We can just run through it really fast, all of us. All right. So de-airing your circuit. Are we going? Yeah. Oh, I already de-aired it. OK, so we're at zero, right? We have negative, or there is no negative. There is no flow. There is no pressure. That means that we are not getting forward flow, correct? So what we're going to have to do here is we're going to see if we have to lock out any volume. So you take out any, see, just a little bit of micro air, and you drag it up here. And it's going to go into the circuit. Then what you're going to do is you're going to clamp here. Okay. You have two syringes. One's going to be empty, and one's going to be completely full. At our facility, we actually hold these syringes on our pump. We replace them every 24 hours so that they're not uh, infected in any sort of way. But it's beneficial. If you have to cut into a circuit, you have flush syringes. If you have to uh, de-air a circuit, you have syringes, again, available. So it's nice. This is what we do. We grab it here, come here, come down on flow. That allows the air to rise, makes it easier for you. You're not going to have as much micro air at the back end. And you're literally just going to push it through. You can see the first is just air coming. And then you're going to start getting a little spotted. And ideally, you should be able to open this, and it will go back on. Let's see if I did it right. If not, sometimes you have to do it more than once or so. You can hear the air, right? There's still going to be air back there, but you'll know that there's no air coming because as I'm pulling from the oxygenator right now, you see none coming, right? So um, usually what would happen in this scenario is it has this little filter up here. And have you guys primed these before ever? No? Yeah. Um, the way that you prime it is basically you just run it. It has this little lipophilic filter here that allows all the air to come out as you run it. So when you fluid fill it, you run it at 2,000 for about, I think it's five minutes, and then you go to 3,000 for about five minutes. And at that point, it actually just de-airs itself for you. So in this scenario, we have no air going to the patient. You can see none coming to the patient, not to my syringe or to, through this line here, right? The only thing that we have is a little bit of air in the back that hopefully removes itself. I can show you. Back here, the little air that we have. See it? See, it is there, right? So it's not good to have a, a blood to air interface ever, right? It causes all sorts of different issues, mostly just with your complement activation or uh, cascade. But so just looking at the cardio help, I think it's important to realize that you have four points here. This is how it works. Okay, this spins and it pushes the blood through these four points. Okay, so it makes it hard to de air all of the air. Okay, so if you ever wanted to get this out, let's say you're on and you're good, right? We were flowing two liters, we're fine, we're happy. But you don't like that noise and you can't get it done. What you have to do is you'd have to come back off, controlled, right? And then you just tilt it and see this is where the air can enter. And you just kind of work it there, and you can see the bubble come out there. 
you do that a couple times and you're able to completely get it, all the air out. You can see I don't have much air anymore there. Come in here. If you look over here, I think it's important to see this little latch. This kind of throws people off sometimes. When they try to put it in, they just jam it in. Like, it's not going, it's not going. You just kind of put it in slightly, okay? And then twist. Pops right in for you. And you can go. And look, you don't have that same sound, right? Because the air is gone. Um, I think that at this point, we can go through. You guys feel comfortable with that? We'll just do it one by one. Does anyone want to start in particular? No? Sure. Let me slow it down here for you. And I can walk you through it, or I can give yeah, you as much help as you like. As much help as I yes, yeah, yeah, sure. need help, yeah. So I'm going to leave these syringes on just to make it a little easier and a little more streamlined for you. Sure. But typically, these wouldn't be on, right? Um, this is a nice system or a nice setup that we have right now because it has a pigtail on it. Yeah. Sometimes they don't. If you look at that one over there, it doesn't have a pigtail on it, which means you'd have to pull off the cap and directly attach it. A little bit more annoying, but you got to make sure that you clamp everything off before you do that, right? Yeah. Okay. Let me grab you some volume here. So look, we're flowing. I'll just give you a little air here, okay? Just gonna come through, you'll see it. And if you look at, you probably, yep, it's going to zero. So we have yeah. nothing going right yeah. now, okay? So first thing we we're gonna do, we're gonna make sure that we have no air. Cause like if you clamp here and you have a slug of air right here, the right What's when you go back point? on, yeah. it's gonna re, re, uh, yeah. deprime your circuit. So you're gonna open the, you're gonna lift that out and just get the air out. And you don't have to be, you can allow some air in there because yeah. it handles air very well. Now that I've walked the air out. Clamp. Clamp, clamp. Perfect. Slow down, yeah? Correct. Yeah. Allow the air to rise, and then you're just gonna push it across. So it's just naturally going to fill that syringe. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. And this is the preferred way we do it at our job. What they give you, they give you a spring-loaded line right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. If I press into it, which I can't do at the moment, but if I press into it, it's under positive pressure, so it's going to shoot out. But what happens is they give you a line to hook up to that, and you hook it into a bag, and you can squeeze the bag and do the same thing. We found that to be harder to set up, so this is the methodology we use. Uh, multiple ways, though, right? Doesn't really matter that much. So it's like you always have a lure, like lure ports on there? We always have pigtails. pigtails. Yeah. It just makes it easier. Yeah. yeah. So ears out. Cool. Uh, pop off. Try and flow again? Yep. Yeah, it's okay. Keep coming up. You got to get up to about 1,500 before you actually see anything happening. And there you go. See, so you're back on. You're getting some sort of flow. Even though I can like, hear that little bit in there. Mm -hmm. um, I think because this is an old circuit. Like, I'm talking, we've used this bunch, I believe. That one is a newer circuit. And that one, after we did it on that one, uh, it, the air went away instantly. Oh, wow. So I think it, just because this is an older circuit, maybe it'll stick around a little bit longer. And maybe that filter's harder to get through or whatnot. Um, okay, anyone else want to try? Come around? Sure. So I'll just give you a little air. Yeah. There you go. Unfortunately, we didn't syringe syringes. Yeah, just to, if you do need more fluid, this is actually good to bring up. Just open your venous line, and you can pull back. And just take from the patient. Yep. Um,
Yeah. Uh, it still works if you don't turn it down. It just works better when it is turned down. Uh, and in the past, when I've had to do this, uh, you call it that. Uh, there's been times where I need to do it twice if it's a lot of air. Uh, and in that case, sometimes I literally just with this syringe, I'll just spit it out in a trash can and redo the whole thing again. Because it'll have a little bit of blood, but not a lot, right? And I just need a, I need a clear syringe to start over. Um, yeah. Sure, yeah. Uh, I do want to show you one thing that I didn't talk about. If you don't clamp this, do you, like, do you realize why we clamp this? Yeah. So uh, I actually made this mistake when I did this without you guys here real quick. Uh, well, so if I just tried to de-air this way, the volume would go in, but it wouldn't go across the membrane. It would go into the patient. So actually, you'd pull, but you're just pulling from the patient. Not, you're not getting that air across the membrane. That's why you close the system, so that the only way that the fluid could go in is if the air comes out, right? So easy mistake to make. I told you I just did it. So um, OK, let's try again. Anyone? Come on in. It's far easier than you guys think. Okay. So, the air out. so going, it'll go for you. We don't have it on very high flow, but eventually it'll go. Did it go? Did I get it? Oh, here it comes. <laughs> Running out of volume here. It'll be clear. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. See, it's just fell in there. Yep. And then now it's going to start spitting out. Keep going. Use the whole syringe. Because okay. um, it kind of goes intermittently. It does this like spitting motion when you're going through. And that's good. Close your. Yep, perfect. Yep, open that up. And turn it back up. Doesn't matter which way you want to do it. Because you have no flow. There you go. I got movement. Hopefully, we don't have more air that comes back in. <laughs> Perfect. Cool. There you go. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Next person. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They are very nice to work with. Yeah. 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 So you're gonna have to. Are we? Did we clamp it off? Yeah. Cool. Do we know how much time we have? Do you know? Can you ask John how much time we have? I think we have 40 minutes for each area. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. So we switch. Yeah. I just wanted to know. Should probably put it on like a timer or something so I know. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, cool. There you go. Yeah. Nailed it.
20 minutes. Okay, cool. So we got a lot of time. All right. Next person. All right, my man. Yeah. Keep forgetting. Cool. Well, you're going forward. Sarah's coming for you. That's going to be a lot of air for you. Yeah, let's just walk it all the way over there. It'll be fine. Come down. Uh, so clamp off. Clamp off before I come down. Yeah. Because if you're on like VA ECMO, essentially it'll be going backwards, right? So you just want to stop that flow. Turn it all the way down. There you go. You're at 800, so whip it all the way. Go across. I'll help you out here. See if I can help it get this going. Keep going, keep going. Okay. And so what I would honestly do is I would take that off, clear the air. Yeah. And do it one more time. Because I just know that the amount of air I gave you was far too much. And like I said, if you have that, I just scrape it in a trash can. Because it's an emergency, I don't really care, right? Yeah, it's fine. And then, so what you do is I'll open this for you and then pull back on that guy. You're taking from the patient, right? Perfect, taking from the patient. And that's just so you can push forward. That's good enough, probably. And then you're going to do the same thing, push it into that guy. And that's how you, if you have a lot of air, you just refill it, right? See, so you look good now. Close the stopcocks and see how we do. We getting anything? Is it going? Yeah, there it goes. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. And I usually like pulling right here, right when I go on, just because there's any extra air. I'm taking it. I don't want it to go into the patient, right? Cool. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well. Cool. Uh, let's see there. Uh, the there. Yeah, absolutely. So let's uh, fix our syringes. So that one should be empty, and this one should be full. And so both these ports that you have the fills on, mm -hmm. they're uh, they pull both ways. So I know there's one. Is this the one that comes out only one direction? Yes, correct. So that's how you prime it, and it has this little yellow cap. Mm -hmm. You should always put this little yellow cap on afterwards. Um, we didn't always do that until we had a case where a patient was breathing really heavy and the negative pressure caused it to actually suck air through there. So I think that's why they tell you to put it on the cap afterwards. So say at your facility you have, you always have the pigtails on and yep. you always have the syringe. We have three pigtails on you, so we do there, there, there. Just gives us lots of access points. It's so much easier to deal with any sort of emergency with a pigtail and a stopcock there. Okay, cool. So um, bring it up a little higher just because I feel like the slowness is kind of screwing it up. All right. So you got it come through. You see it coming. So you, if you just want to see the back, turn. I would turn it down. Yeah. Perfect. So you can see the air. So the four ports, one, two, three, four. Okay. And as it spins, it literally comes out here and then it shoots across. It does it to do it evenly across the membrane rather than just centralized, right? You, if you go across the membrane, you can get better oxygenation because you're using the entire uh, oxygenator right? or surface area for, for that matter. Um, yep. I'm just going to push it across. Is 
doesn't matter if you turn it on or have it on first or not. I think the, the proper way to do it would be turn it on before so you don't have any retrograde flow. But uh, I kind of like trying to do it simultaneously because if there is a little air in there, it just sits there and you're like foaming it, you know. Going? Perfect. Yeah. Well, it sounds pretty loud, so. If you, I mean, I can show you how to do the other thing. So you come down, right? Yeah. Pop it out. You have to tamp up the lamp. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the way that the, in, the air would enter is just, if you want it to go high, right? You need it to come over here and then come up out. And it's the easiest way. So you tilt and kind of rotate it and tilt and then kind of rotate it to get that thing out. Let's see? And then so um, the air needs to come out of this top port. So kind of like this, it would be because see the air is, needs to rise that way. So you come here, see the bubble comes to this side, comes up, and then you see it come out that little port right there. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you could try to do it with that guy. So you're going to lean it down, you're going to tilt it, get that bubble to come to this little side. All right. And then you're going to rotate it up and then it'll come out this top port. To go for it yeah there it is it's up there right now so now it's put it's passed so you click it in and it should just go forward okay. Perfect. twist in nailed it it's good to go you actually don't have to do that in this, that no, in this scenario. Go the yeah, because it it'll just go on its own. But you guys yeah. didn't go through priming today, did you? No, I didn't. Mostly because it's kind of hard to, to reshow it over and over again. But the way that you do prime it is is essentially I hold this bag up, and as I I open this port right here, and I click open my Venus line to keep this one clamped. And so it comes down, it goes through here, it comes up, and then it fills up very slowly to the top, and then boom, you close it at the top when the, the okay. fluid hits that, okay? Your arterial side from here on will be all air, but then you just push that forward, okay? After that, what you do is you put it on 2,000 RPMs, you let it sit for five minutes, you put it on 3,000 RPMs, let it sit for five minutes with this yellow cap off, and it's prime. Okay. So you said uh, let the Venus side go in, uncap, wait yeah. until fluid comes out, recap. Correct. After that, this side is uh, not capped yet? Uh, it, it would be capped off, but after, um, basically, I get it running forward, I just open that, and it's on positive pressure, okay. so it just clears itself. Okay. And I do that, so usually we have stopcocks here, right. so I have to do that to every single stopcock just to clear the whole stopcock of air. Okay. Um, but I mean, so if you... you attach, do you, your, uh, so you attach this on first, and then... Press? Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Same with this one. Yeah. Do a complete dry set. Ah, oh, shit. Well, that's the next person, I guess. So with gravity for this one, you uh, let it naturally fill out as well? Uh, say again? So after you've done this side, and then you cap this off, mm -hmm. you go ahead and turn it on or to flow it through, or you just let it naturally? It naturally will come out, yeah. Um, but if you wanted to do that, you, you could, too. Okay. It's, that was um, is that 2,000 RPMs at 2 minutes and then 3 at, for 5 minutes or so? Uh, five, 5 at 2,000 RPMs, five minutes, and then at 3,000 RPMs, five minutes. That's the recommendation of the, but realistically, once you hear the bubbling stop, like go away, that's when you know the bubbles are gone. Okay. Um, and at the end of it, you crap. Yeah, so like if you're in an emergency situation and you don't have, let's say, 10 minutes to prime it, uh, if, as long as you don't hear that bubbling anymore, you should be fine. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, does anyone else want to go? Oh, uh, does anyone want to switch the oxygenator into the hand crank and try that? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me DR this real fast. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> um, the big thing is this clip here. See that? Yes, that little light. Yeah, it's annoying. 
uh, but it keeps it very secure. So yeah. it's one of those things that you need, but you don't like. Yeah. Um, I'm doing this just to, I accidentally put a bunch of air into the circuit. So just... I, you were talking to me about something else. Yeah, I know. And I'm just here to learn. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so let's say you're going, right? Yeah. And it just all of a sudden shuts off on you. Yeah. What you would have to do is turn it turn it down, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's shut off so it doesn't really matter, right? right. You're going to grab this, you're going to click here, right at the bottom. Yep. and what I do is I put one hand here and one hand here, and then you twist it, Yes. and it makes it easy to pop out, okay? Yeah, that is easy. I will be your stand, typically this oh. is on a stand right next to it. Yeah, like on a pole? Yeah, and then you're just going to slide it in. Like, okay. oh, there's probably a turning component also? Yeah. Oh, I see, I see. Yes. Get it? No. There's like a. Should I just like shove it in there? Let's see here. Oh, I only got halfway. Yeah. Oh, I. I think I. You gotta go under. That's kind of what I thought. I can't see it. Thank you. Yep. I should click. I'm like waiting for it. I like know I'm right there. You like, there you go. There you go. And then. It's hard to see when you don't I don't know how you'll be able to rotate that, but you could just either. put it. Usually it's on something. So here's an always a, a manual spot place that you can put it. It's kind of in the way. Um, oh, that's for like, so but like it, hook in onto the, yeah. yeah. But then you can't hand crank no, it. You know right. what I mean? But but at least it's no, a. No, but you can't crank it then, right? Yeah. Like, so typically what happens is you have a pole on your cart that yeah. sticks out and it has this hand crank attached to it. Usually it's like right here. So you can just click and then click and put it yeah. in. Okay, and then go back and forth. Um, in this scenario, I mean, I was going to try to be your pole, but I realized I can't do that because you'll hit me well, instead. Like so, the worst case scenario, yeah. I just have to hand crank it. Like that, I guess. Like an adult. Yeah. <laughs> Wild. Okay, can I do all that again? Sure. Great. Yeah. I just want to um, like, feel it. Yeah. Another annoying thing that happens, though, when, when you try to do this yeah. is you have. Um, you have your water lines on, you have this hooked up. Right. You know, you have a lot of things. If you were really to do it, what would actually happen is these would also be on, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you'd have everything on, you'd have your flow probe. And so it would be a lot more cumbersome to actually yeah. get off. You can take these off if you want, yeah. Will you tell me what this is? Um, that's going to be, it reads your crit, your hemoglobin, your SVO2. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, cool. um, so, and it says zero right now. That's why I had it off. So. Okay, so I would just put this just like also. Yep. And this is for? Uh, that is your pressures. So okay. you'll, like, as you pull each one away, you'll see the pressures go away. So yeah. there's no pressures there anymore for you. Take that off. And then what I'm gonna do is go like this, and then yeah. Nice. Nice, easy. Cool. Well, and then hand crank away. With the pole, it's easier. Yeah. I bet. Oh, it's it's much easier yeah. with the, with the pole there. But I guess this is good to know because if you do, are transporting, and that's what a lot of the cardio helps are for. We used right. to take them on ambulances or helicopters, for that matter, and um, it it's something to know. So like, what what? Like, Cliff. Cliff. Yeah. Nice to meet you. My name's Ashley. I'm a rush student. Um, <laughs> Great to meet you, Ashley. When, what Cliff said is that you like kind of like put it in just a few, and then you're gonna kind of slide it tight here, so then you're gonna have it yeah. yeah. on it, and then out of your way. On the left side. On my left side. Okay. Should I put them back on and make it hard? Sure. I mean, you don't have the oxygen line. You don't have the, this is this is the one that's really annoying. Because usually you have the lines oh, the and they're hanging oh. here. Yeah. So they're hanging underneath. So you can't pull it directly out very easily. You have to kind of do this like yeah. swooping motion. Yeah. Uh, we just don't have those here right now. So you just kind of have to imagine that it'll be harder. Yeah. Um, Thanks, Yeah. Oh. Okay. So you got your click here. What I was telling her is usually I put my right hand here and this here. And you can just pop it right out. And then, okay. So yeah, take that guy. Take that guy. Yeah. 
Yeah. Press that. So, yep, just a little twist. There you go. So you have a clip here and you have a clip here, okay? So it's just gonna go right on top. So you feed it in and it, yeah. Kind of like, you know, see a clip here and the clip is right there. So you kind of put it underneath and then you push it down and it should just clamp, clamp right in for you. So it, is it a skew a little bit? Should I try the bottom one first maybe? Uh, no, the, the, this one should go in first. And then should pop in. Oh, I wouldn't pull the lever. <laughs> okay. And then you can just rotate it and go. Uh, seems like it would be annoying in this area. There you go. Well, the only other thing is remember to clamp out. Yeah. When you're, when you're doing it. Push and twist. Nice and slight, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. You too. All right, I think we're about to switch here. So if it, would anyone else like to try it? Sure, come on in. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it goes in. Yeah. You go. Um, you worked with Cardio Help before? No. Okay. Awesome. It's got a little latch here. Okay. What I say is to put your right hand here, put your left hand here, open the latch, and it's just literally a twist. Okay. That's all it is. You just unhinging it, and you can take it right out. Okay. First things first, you'll clamp it off. I don't want any sort of retrograde flow happening. Okay. And then you're going to take your components off here. Black one and then uh, gray or whatever color that is. Uh, it kind of, you press a button here, kind of hold it, and it just pops right off for you. It like goes in and then clamps down. Yeah. So you can invert like that, and then you push down. There you go. And then you kind of, yeah, right up. Cool. cool. And then see, it's got a clip here okay. and a space there. So you put it in kind of just like that last one we did. And then there you go. Okay. And it's in. And then you rotate, hold it. I guess you. However, it's comfortable for you. You can do it right or left-handed, but you're going to hold it with one, and then you're going to crank it with the other one. Uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, but I would uncramp. No, yes. Your <laughs> That's okay. Okay. It's the benefit of having a centrifugal pump. So, see this little flag? Uh -huh. You put it in there and it goes right on that little guy. So you just kind of askew and then drop it down. And the motion's not so much a push in, it's just kind of a, a snapped out. Way. Yeah. Nice and easy, perfect. Good, there it is, it's on, ready to go. Awesome. <laughs> Did you just want me to send them to you? Switching. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Anyone else? Mess around with it? Sure. Yeah. Show. I could do the de airing too. Or what, what am we I were just doing? switching this into this. We could do both. Okay, so we're going to switch stations now, and we'll uh, just rotate, and we the live stream will be back on in just a couple minutes. So we'll get started. My name is David. We'll, um, we're going to practice doing some circuit changes this morning, or this afternoon, excuse me. Uh, so we're going to make it as real as possible. So when we do a circuit change, you know, most patients are not ready to come off ECMO, so you come off ECMO for a little bit, and if you're ready with rescue meds, and you know, they're going to code, prepare for all of that. So we're gonna have a little team, a couple of teams come up and do it at a time, maybe three or four at a time. Everybody can practice clamping. We're not gonna actually cut anything because we have connectors ready for you. We'll actually uh, clamp and disconnect the connectors. 
when you put them back together, just don't push them on all the way like you normally would with a normal circuit past that second barb because it'll be too hard to take apart. Uh, so we'll do that and we'll kind of walk through it and we'll get a game plan and we'll move forward. So first couple people want to come up? Be a guinea pig? All right. Cool. How y'all doing? Everybody, so I'm with, you guys are all perfusionists or what's your back? Yeah, I'm a rush student. Was that? Four of us? Four, yeah, four. Good, yeah. Okay. So you guys are all rush therapists? I mean, for, oh, okay. Nice to meet you guys. Okay. So let's go ahead. So we're going to pretend our patient's been on for a couple of days. We're in VA ECMO. Uh, circuits getting cloudy, lots of fiber and strands, so it's getting really sticky. Uh, so we think we're going to be on for another week or so. But let's pretend we get change out the circuit completely, right? Um, so we have your inlet outlet side. We just have a continuous loop here for now. And then we'll just kind of look at this. And you see here's your patient. So we have two people get ready to clamp and disconnect. Somebody could be like the doctor or the respiratory therapist because we want to make sure we have rescue meds thrown up, make sure we have uh, emergency vent setting. So let's kind of make it semi-real. You have epi and calcium drawn up. Uh, somebody wants to draw some saline before we get started. If you want to do that from that bag. Uh, we should have some needles. Yeah, so we have in, yeah. Um, so kind of think, are you going to... Yeah, really simple. Yeah, so you get yourself a couple of clamps. And we're going to make a mess, so don't worry about that, because, uh, go ahead. <laughs> and then, so if you want to be the, oh, sorry, going to be the person that drops the saline, you could be the uh, the drippy drip person. So we're going to, right, so you can disconnect those probes if you like, because it really doesn't matter. Uh, so we'll clamp on each side of the connector and just disconnect it. Right, let me help you out here, yeah. More? I would do a whole thing. So I'll just go ahead and put it back in there. I'll hold it up for you. Get bubbles. And then go ahead and pull it back. All right. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait. We're not ready. Do we have. That's why we communicate, right? So closed loop communication, right? So we have our meds drawn up, Doctor? Dr. Darian, our meds are drawn up? Thank you. All right. Okay, so we, we have our rolls ready to go. We know we're going to clamp and clamp and cut. We can pretend to cut, right? Right. We don't have to actually. I don't see any scissors or scalpels. No, no, I'm moving out of the way. Right. And we're all sterile, of course, right? We don't have to worry about that. All right. Okay, you're, be, you're, gonna, you're gonna be in charge because you're clamping. We'll make somebody in charge. So you can get, you get tell when you're ready to come off. I'll turn the flow off. We'll be loud and proud off ECMO. Ready to come off? And off ECMO, 2 p.m. Doctor, how's our patient? Looking good. Can I trust you? Is that real? How are we doing, guys? Doing okay? Somebody put them on too tight. All right, so we have some drip if you want to put it together. So do we want any bubbles, right? No bubbles. So we'll go ahead and drip in there for her with some saline. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Marry them together, get some drip together. There you go. Uh, connect them together, and you drip at the same time. There you go. Make you connect. Let pull it up again. All right. Good job. Go ahead and keep going. Yep. So get it past the first barb, you'll be okay. All right. And the other one? Nope. All right. Our patient's starting to code, guys. Can we hurry up? All right. Back on ECMO. All right. Did you, did you flow up on your pump over there? We're flowing? Yeah. Flowing? Okay, good. No bubbles in. Patient's back. Looks good. I see no bubbles. No bubbles. Good job. All right. You get to keep your jobs. It's amazing. Yeah. I love keeping my job. Yeah, it's amazing. Good job. Any questions? Anything you guys want to review or? The airing with the cardio help on the pigtails. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you could mention that if they had a pigtail in line, you don't necessarily need to use a squirt method once you have your venous connected right on the arterial. I guess it depends on what center you practice at because yeah, we 
that's another, just another option. Yeah, of course. For, yeah, many different ways to do it. Yep. Sorry, you just bought an auction. Yeah, we just yeah we just go and pretending there's auction at each one. Yep, yeah, exactly. Now, speaking from somebody who doesn't need the cardio help, mm -hmm. like in this scenario, I notice everybody's just planting rubber first. You would typically want to make sure you're planting arterial first, right? If you come off that, it really doesn't matter. What if you have air yeah. coming through your wings? Well, you can clamp both at the same time, either way. Yeah. yeah. If you turn, well, the centrifugal pump, if you clamp anywhere, it'll stop, right? Right. So if you turn your flow down before you clamp, you'll get no, you'll get no yeah, bubbles at all. So, so yeah. yeah. No. No. Yeah. A lot of times what happens to what we would do is that we would, whoever was doing it, we would make sure one person owned both of them at the same time yeah, or just yeah. in unison. But for this, I'm just letting them kind of right, practice right. just cutting. But yeah, yeah. But good point. Though. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Right, if you're doing it right. Yeah. 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 If not, we just plant the same time and just roll. Yeah, yep. yeah. All right, next four, want to try? Come on, don't be shy. We're only going to make fun of you for like 12 seconds. That's it. Wait, so this is the simulated auctioneer, right? Just not so this is just the pump head. The pump We're just pretending there's an auctioneer okay. line. So don't even worry about auctioneer. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You guys, you get a clamp? Yeah, I just, I'm going to. A couple things because I was with them in the first group and that was a good question. So this is the centrifugal pump. It's very similar to the pump that's behind you. Same principle, yep. yeah. But we're pretending it's like another. Another pump. pump. It doesn't matter, right? Oh, we're just pretending yeah. that we. Say you're going from like an R bed to an oxygen. Right. So we get, what we do is we're like we're on one pump. Pump. So what the scenario is pump is pot, the circuit's potting off. It's getting sticky. We're in day number twenty or whatever, right? Okay. So we need to go to another pump. So ideally we would have two of the same pumps best right. side to right. side. But things happen, right? right? So we're just going to kind of pretend that we're doing a complete swap out. Normally, you would swap out closer to the patient, of course, right? Because you get rid of that, that excess tubing. But here, we're just doing it here for ease of use and practice of clamping. Okay? So we don't have to really cut anything. We have connectors in line. I just advise when you put it back on, don't go all the way to the last bar because it takes, makes it really hard to come off. So uh, maybe go to the first, maybe the second bar so you, have, you don't have much leakage. We're good to go. So we're pretending it's a real situation, right? So, you know, we make sure we have rescue meds drawn up. We have a team leader, physician, uh, respiratory has emergency vent settings. We have epi calcium drawn up, anything you may need. Uh, and we'll go from there. Go ahead. We've done this before. So if you guys want to, you guys should take, you know, advantage of many opportunities you can. I'll be a team player, though. So you just tell me what you want to do. And I think the most important thing is um, David's problem with us is communication. Yep. So just define who's going to do what, and that will speed up your process a lot. Right. So we're going to kind of practice, talk about what you're going to do before. Yeah. Uh, make sure you're not crossing each other or doing the clamp on the same side. So you guys gonna, you got to connect, clamp on each side with disconnect. Make sure you know which one's the inlet or outlet before you do it. That way there's no confusion. In, Hook up. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. On, uh, are we going to indicate which ones? So this right now, this one's going to be the... Venus. Mr. Inlet. Yep. So this is going to be Venus and Sarko. So and then here's so a Venus, Venus here. Yeah. So that's your arterial. So we're going to switch this over here. And then that one will go here. Exactly. Yep. Okay. You right, guys you ready? We're going to clamp at the same time. We'll be really uh, coordinated about that. So we're going to arm bring this connector over. So you get a drip for them? I'll drip this side and she can drip uh, the other side. Okay, that's fine. Ready? Everybody's wait before you clamp off. Make sure everybody's ready. So he's gonna turn the flow down here for you and we get comes off. One, two. Oh, he's not ready. And off act mode. All right, so go ahead and drip, yep. You can't put connector to connector. You want to take a connector off. So if you can't take that one off, take the other one off. There you go. So that's something you want to make sure if in real life you didn't have that happen to you. There you go. All right, guys, so the patient's starting to code, so let's move it. All right, you're ready? So let's unclamp on your new circuit. I'll turn your flow up for you. 
You have no bubbles? We're sure we have no bubbles? No bubbles? All right, let's go up. Open up. You got to be loud and proud. On ECMO. On ECMO. Don't be embarrassed. All right, back on. Come down event settings. We're looking good. Good job. How did it feel? Fun? Yeah. Ideally, when the second one, you'll have it primed as well. You will. So you want to make sure, right, you want to make sure all your ducks are in a row before you even start. Um, and my best advice is pre prepare for the worst emergency possible. You're prepare, you know, want to have extra blood at the bedside, anything. Uh, whatever goes wrong, just want to be prepared. Good job, guys. And, uh, like, do we have a list? Do you have a list of things that you do have? So each, each ECMO center is going to be a little bit different, what their guidelines, their list will be. So it's really good to make sure you have a list. Uh, that way it's, it's uniform and done the same way every single time. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, I don't have one because I don't know what your center practice is, but right. um, I would suggest our, building one or helping build one. Right. Yeah. Most of our centers, we don't have uh, ECMO program. The ones okay. that we have done in the past are to transport short term at the hospital so we can transport it out to a bigger facility. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Good job, man. Appreciate Pleasure meeting you. All right. Are we there, everybody? Everybody's good? Cool. All right. Thank you. Jim's going to do a I can't do it by myself. Why would uh, I can't do it by myself. I need someone to drive. <laughs> I wish I could, but I can't. Yeah, we could do a challenge. I think you volunteered for it. <laughs> no, he told me to do it. All right, go ahead. You're on your own. The natural average is 24, but you're doing good. <laughs> right. we don't good do job. That's why we got to practice. Yep. <laughs> You can do it? Yeah. All right. Time to beat us 12 seconds. 12? Yeah, come on. Probably could. Probably could. I've done it in real life in about 12, 13. Yeah, you're right. Exactly. I know. I was yeah. like, after the facts, I didn't realize. You tried to sabotage, exactly. Yeah. He, no, he did it. When he did the same thing. Oh, I saw a bubble. I see a lot of air. 30. 
It's okay, we're in VV, it doesn't matter. <laughs> right, exactly. Who needs a brain? It's fine. 23? 30. Wow, very good. <laughs> good job, everybody. Any questions, concerns, complaints, comments, debriefing, anything? Okay. Well, thanks. Thank you. Sure. My name is Robin Mogger, and I work for Biomed Simulation as Education Director. Um, and this is a simulator that does bypass and ECMO. I think if you're a student, you probably are familiar with it. So, um, and I've been fusionist since '81, I guess, and so different experiences. But, but basically, this just reminds me of doing perfusion virtually because it's all the physiology involved. And to set up things, situations that we have, you have to know the physiology. So it's kind of a weird way to test your physiology a little bit. So, um, but I think it's helpful. How many of you guys at your hospital do you do ECMO? Yeah. Do you do perfusions to it, or do um, or do you have techs or nurses or? Okay. Ah. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I decided I, I, I turned that around a little bit. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Oh, right. Right. And so you with brush too. So I was That seems pretty familiar. So, and where are you from? Sorry. California. Yes. Okay. And you're with him? Uh, no. Oh. Oh. But uh, our hospitals, we do a few ECMO, but we would initiate and watch and throw the chance. Okay. So I'm not there anymore, but I started off at Shans, and it was strictly ECMO specialists or NRTs that did the, the job there. Okay. I'm not going now, but I'm still in ECMO. Okay. Specialist. I'm okay. following around as it goes. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. And Julia's with Brush, yeah. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, I think that, you know, I think about the training that people do for ECMO, especially if you're not a perfusionist, and if you've been involved in that, it's, you know, what I've seen is they are a lot of intensive didactic, you know, like four or five hours at a time to learn, like, about venous saturation, right? So it's, it's a lot to put into your head at, at one time, I think. And uh, then they usually take them into a wet lab, make sure they can hand crank and stuff. But it's not always with simulation. Simulation is going to actually introduce a situation that you don't expect. So in other words, if I come in, the, your instructor comes in and says, well, you know how to hand crank? Yeah, okay. Check. You know, do you know how to override that bubble detector? Check. Right? And, uh, but that's a different skill than actually having that happen to you and then know what to do. Right? So, and I've seen situations where people don't do the right thing because, it, they, because they haven't been tested on it. So um, what our machine does, and you guys know from as a students, we have a like a box, it's a patient module, and you can hook up your circuit, bypass or ECMO, VA, VB, and uh, then run your your pump, and then the machine changes things, changes your blood gases, changes your resistance, a bunch of other different kind of things. Um, now, if you want to, if you don't, you know, want to set the whole circuit and all that kind of stuff, then we have what we call the 3D version of it. And uh, the thing I like about it is that, you know, you really need the muscle memory. You need to be sitting there and, you know, and, and someday we'll have the glasses and all that good stuff. But really, right now, it's not, you know, not, not feasible for us. But uh, it was a, a ECMO meeting a few months ago, and they were talking about how difficult it is to do these hands-on competencies. You know, I mean, Kansas City and these big places, and I think in even D.C., the children's D.C. have done the meeting. And they talk about it as being a real challenge. And this is something I said at this point in my life, I'm, I, I work at, from home in my pajamas. And so what you could do, though, is when you do competencies, you could actually do this online. And so this would be the instructor screen, and this is what we would call the learner screen. So I could have control over this screen, make things change on this screen, and then you would ha then you would interact with it. Now, if you have a one-on-one, -on -one, then it's a it can be kind of intimidating if we had all you here, and then you know, you got up and it was oh you, know, you didn't do this right. So it's it's not it's hard for people, you know. And I don't care you know where you are, what you're doing. It's just hard for people to kind of 
do reflective learning when they're, they're under watch with other people. And so I think that this will allow you to do that. So you just, it's one-on-one, -on -one, right? You just have this conversation and the instructor just wants to know, why, why did you do that? Help me understand. What, is it a process problem? Is it, you know? So I think that it's, it's a different way to learn and a little, maybe a little less intimidating and, and uh, probably not for the first person that's coming in that has to learn all that stuff. Um, but I think it's a different, you know, allows people to do more competencies. I think it's good. So I'm a fan, let's to say. Um, so what I'm gonna do is actually get this started for us because I need to. That previous group, I mean, they killed the paint. No, they, they did great. <laughs> they did wonderful. I'm just teasing. But sometimes it's kind of, you know, it's a little bit of a challenge to kind of, you know, get the butt, you know, work with the, the screen and stuff, particularly those of us who are not, as I say, gamers. Um, but it's all physiological. So somebody should sit here and somebody should sit here. I know that's true. Right? Yeah, but he gets to do it. Well, one has to. Well, one has to run it, and then one has to be the the. Uh, what, we had this this one guy. He used to he used to do Sims at some of the meetings, and he goes, "Where's our victim?" I'm like, I'm like, don't say that. That's not nice. But anyway, call people victim. Look at it already. Already is right there. Okay, cool. Oh, yes, of course you can. Are you using the 3D at all? Or? No, we, we just have this one. And then, uh, I see you're not using 3D yet. You're, I mean, the acting apart. You do need software up there, yes, yes. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, that's going to be coming out soon. So, um, well, let's look at this ECMO. So, usually, what? Let's hit the ventilator there for a second. And I've got this set on rest settings right now, or what I interpret as rest settings. Please, any feedback you might have would be, you can stand <laughs> Any feedback you could give me about vent settings, I'd appreciate. But I just sort of ask people all the time, and I have a little form that I fill out. So no expert whatsoever. But I do understand that there's quite a variance about how people set their ventilators and how they lean and such. So. Um, but what we're going to do this time is um, I've got those set, and we're just going to go ahead and go on ECMO because the program doesn't set the ECMO flow. You have to kind of do that. So to get ready for that, we're just going to leave the uh, the uh, set this there. So go ahead and pull out, do an overview, and we're going to assume the patient's going to need ECMO because. And why don't you take the blankets off there? Just hit that little thing. There. Yeah, someone has to sit here though and run with stuff. Oh, excellent. Thank you, Joy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can do anything you want. Last time someone uh, was very sneaky and did something to somebody without anybody knowing, but I'm like, I'm on, yeah, I, I won't ruin it for them. So, folks, I mean, this patient has to go in that. We have the cannulas. It's like a 21 and a 2090. This is what we call whopping cannulas. Yeah, good. And this is her patient. You know, she's not that really that big. Um, so what's the first thing you would do? The patient's cannula, they've happenized. Here's your monitor, you know, it's not looking too, not too bad, but you know, pulse uh, ox, not pretty bad. So let's go on ECMO. That's what they would say, right? Okay, so we go here. Okay. Uh, yeah, you don't know the cardio help or do you? Yeah. I'm not super familiar with the cardio help now, but. Well said, well said. Yeah, so would, uh, yeah. Turn that on. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a centrifugal pump, so um, it's based on preload and afterload, so you know, a little bit higher, just in my experience, on this one. Right? And now you can take the clamp off, and I think you need to hit it like right about there. Yeah, the down there, the clamp part. There you go. Now hit the hand, and then it should have forward flow. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It looks awfully dark. Well. <laughs> oh, so you have to put some oxygen on, I suppose, yeah. huh? So do over, yeah, you can try to find it over there. That's, that? It's down here somewhere, but do overview is probably easier. Overview. Yeah. And then hit the, that right there. Over here? Oh, nice. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. I'll turn it on. Yeah. That should probably help. Uh, you, see, you see that? Oh, yeah. 
Uh, I'm kidding. Because uh, the other way you can just touch, but this one you have to actually. Oh, I got it. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. Oh, there yeah, we go. Yeah. It's different, yeah. Right. Ooh, good job. Right there you go. There we go. Look at it. Much better. Okay. Good, it's good. Your right now. Uh, uh, right. Right. All right. Cool. That's good. Okay. So now you're on ECMO. You feel the blood pressure looks, I don't know, I guess it looks okay, huh? Yeah, it looks fine. Okay, it looks fine. It looks fine. So now what would be the next thing you might want to do? Um, I don't know. Draw some, Get I coffee draw or guys. something? Yeah. yeah. I guess draw some labs. Yeah, let's draw some labs. This is not really working really right. I'm not liking this at all, though. It's not your fault. It's just... Uh, Hmm. Let's see. There we go. Yeah, well, you know. No, it's a, a little, as Jorge would say, a little glitchy today. Not behaving that well. So, you make me very unhappy here. I don't like it. That worked last time. Well, here's what we're going to do. Let's go. Let's grab the clamp. And uh, I guess we've got it here. We're just going to turn this off for a second. Huh? We have something, didn't we? Okay. Oh, it's like kind of a Venus. Yeah. I don't, but this is a Venus. I'm not sure. They climb mm -hmm. something. Um, so what we're going to do is let's go ahead and um, turn on the oximetry. Right? Have you used the oximeter at all, the through oximetry? No, I'm not. So yeah, okay, go ahead. Yeah. Yes, so what's what measuring is the oxygen content in the brain. Perfect. And then hit the yellow button. Yellow. Uh, this oh, one. Then, yeah. And then hit the one right there. This is a little tricky. So just hit the blue part of that once. There you go. Okay, so you and then hit, it, yeah, and nice. the other side, the other side of the. the yeah, you got it. Okay, good. And then go back to the oximeter, which is there. And then we're going to do the lower part too. So three and four, so three. And then should come in. Yep, it is exactly the same thing. Perfect. Well done. Well done. So and then we can see what the numbers are. Do you know what the numbers should be, or do you? Uh, they should be higher. There you go. No, I would agree. I would agree. <laughs> I think everybody would sure. agree. Yeah. We don't know. We don't know too much. Yeah. So what would be something you might do? Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think might? I mean, what would you? That's probably flow higher. Okay. Yeah, oh yeah, I turned off the flowing. You can't do oh, that anymore. Clamped off. That's probably yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Kind of well, yeah, but it's it's not oxidated, so it could, it could not be a good thing. So we're going to we have to deal with what we have what we Something got here. Zero flow yeah. Isn't good. Yeah, we're not going to deal with the flow right now. Oh, okay. Sorry. Not your fault. <laughs> yeah, it's not wrong. So what what else do we want to do? I mean, again, um, from a from a, a caretaker point of view. And we're not flowing on that. I said, don't worry about the flow, right? Well, you should be worrying, but yeah. you can't do anything about it. It's uh, not your know. not your fault. <laughs> so you want to get some oxygen to that blood, I guess. Let's, yeah. let's, so you either do two things. One, you need to either check the gas, right, yeah. see what it is. Or you can just turn off the ventilator because we were on rest settings, right? Yeah. And you so can do can. that in any order you want to do that in. Yeah, so this high settings is like, I don't know, 40, 35, 12, 5 is probably okay. Turn Yep, and so you hit that, stop, right? And then you turn that, and then you, yeah, then you hit that button again, the green one again. Okay, and then go to the uh, inspiration pressure, pressure that's, that's the only thing. So let's go to uh, like maybe, yeah, that's, yeah, sure, that's good. Uh, yeah, you have to. You have to hit, it's tricky. You have to hit this, turn it, and then hit that one to set it, right? Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah, I know. a long time. Okay. Oh, that's good. Uh-huh. Sure. Yeah. Good. 
All right, then let's get a gas. And so to do that, go back to overview. And then we're going to get a gas. And so to do that, we hit this button. And then we hit uh, that button right there. Oh, you got to call something to get a gas? Gotta get, now, yes. Hit the button. Oh, you have to oh, hit the button. Oh, you got to call me I'm not sure if you hit that button. It's usually, oh, oh, oh I, I was wrong. So you're just going to run a gem report at the top there. And then you get to pick. I would suggest you don't pick one of these because we're not on ECMO. But one of these up here, maybe. Sure, just randomly. Yeah, well, I don't know if that was. But cool. It could have been the, um, okay. And then you hit this right here. Oh, okay. And you see that it's actually, um, what does it say? That's an LB. So so it's coming out of the heart. It's not looking too good. Right? No, not very really good. Really so I don't know what you would do about that, particularly. Um, there's not a whole lot we can do about it, but we can give maybe give some fluid. Yeah, true. So it let's go hit that. And yeah, perfect. So it's a little hit the X there for a second and hit the middle thing there. Okay. Uh, I had to learn this too. So. Okay. So then let's see, where's that? I think that's the on button right there. Yeah, there it is. Let it come up. And then the first button up there, the adult, hit that one. And uh, so keep hitting it or? Yeah, uh, no, just hit it, the button once on the oh, side. Okay, yeah, yeah. Then hit confirm down there, the button, not the below it. Oh, I see. Oh. Yeah. yeah, that's a trick. Okay, I see. <laughs> and then the B, we're going to use the B pump. Perfect. And then pop this, yeah, got to bring this up to the front, I guess, the panel. And hit the second one, and then give whatever you want. Um, I mean, it's a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, it either has red cells or it doesn't. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter. So you know, you pick whatever you want. Right there you go. Sure. And that's what you want. Oops, yeah. I do that all the time. So how fast? Let's make the rate really high. So let's hit that there, and then I don't know. Make it like fifty thousand five. Sure. And then do I think oh, it's I got five, hit yeah. Oh, wait, five keep, oh, keep oh, going. Because sure. we want to go in fast. Cool. Oh, okay. there we go. I'm with you. I'm with you 100%. Cool. <laughs> so this is going to change. Um, I think the hematocrit is 36. And so if you go back over to overview, back on the monitor, you should be seeing this. I think this is like at 12 or something like that. So it should go up here pretty quickly. Oxygen is still pretty bad. It is, it is. 86 isn't too bad. Um, and let's see. So the last person that was here just walked away. And as they were walking away, it was kind of interesting. <laughs> ah, well done. Well done. What would you do besides, you know, hey, Give them a shock if they need it. Give them some there you go. magnesium, possibly. Some oh, good job. Yeah, whatever you're gonna give them. Well, number one is available. I always figure, yeah, just give them throw the book at them. What did you say? Yeah, I think my only job would be to let people know, yeah. <laughs> and sometimes that is the what your job is to say, Hey, by the way, yeah. so that's why we watch the monitor, right. Get home. The other thing you can actually do with this too is that you can pull up um, um mostly I think they come with it and yeah I just created like um one here I think is what it is. It's a TV and The TV is nicer. Bigger is here. So come out. Oh, do just an overview for a second. And then hide back in that thing. And then go over here. Hit that thing. So if you, you know, like I just have like flow charts and stuff just for teaching stuff. Or if you have like a pre brief, you can. So what you do is you just put it in like a um, uh, PowerPoint. And then you 
save it as a PNG file, but it only saves one slide at a time. So, you know, and then you, then you put it in here. In some way, you organize it so you know, which is kind of, yeah, it's kind of hard to do. But it works kind of well, you know, well. I think I did a, um, what's the other one we did? Um, Just sort of a you know, north south, it's just you know, a presentation. So you can do different, you know, you can also just you know, do your PowerPoint behind it, but it's slightly a little bit clever to do it that way, I guess. And so, but the uh, so what would you do if you had north? Do you know what north south syndrome is? Do you want to uh, try to explain that? I do, not, I do not remember. I think it's something where you're. Mm -hmm. That's right there. <laughs> you can read the sign. Oh, I see. It's not actually going down. It's just it's a mixing. You're getting deoxygenated blood cells. Okay. So your blood just getting pumped down to. So your heart's starting to beat again, but yeah. your lungs aren't recovering. So you're on view, uh, you're on view, and like your heart's recovering, but your lungs are not. So it's pumping out to actually so blood. It's like the actual blood in your head. Uh, so you have a right radio, so you can check that as well. And the mixing point is the point where your heart is overpowering whatever your echo flows are. So it's coming up to here, it's turning around, and your feet are really profused, and your head is not. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's only when uh, it's only when the um, fem fem echo VA fem. Okay. Right. So it's not reaching right. all the way up. It's just getting kind of right, brought back right, down. Right, right, right. So what do you think we right. should do then? I mean, you could turn down your flows. Turn down your flows. What's going to happen? Um, well, then you're not going to get enough perfusion to... So if you turn down your flows, now you're not pushing as much. So now the yeah. mixing cloud point, and here's your aorta, and here's yeah. your feet. Now instead of it going up to here, if you turn down your flows, now it's only going to go up to here, because the heart's okay. forcing them to go down. So the option to turn up your flows to get enough to go, or...? Yeah, in the meantime, but there's also, you can add a wide, you can add another cannula, yeah. so that you're sending actually the blood through the heart in the lungs, so like, so that you don't lose the Okay. Yeah, so in other spots, and you actually do. So, yeah, I mean, it's the same, I mean, exactly what she said. And, you know, uh, somebody mentioned, uh, you know, about increasing ventilator settings, but that's going to hurt the lungs, right? That's the reason that they do that. And then, you know, I, I mean, people give beta blockers, et cetera. And then just central cannulation. We actually have a, a program that's called VAV, VAV ECMO. It's a, it's a model that you could use for a hybrid ECMO. But this is a picture of it. And basically, blood's coming out of, you know, the femoral, and then it goes back into the femoral, and there's a Y, and it goes into, yeah, it goes into the IJ. And so that's, we have that model that, you know, that you can see when it works properly, it works really well. Would you increase your flow to move that mixing point, like, so it's safer? Do that in the meantime, while yeah. you're getting stuff to the yeah. okay. usually that's not allowed to the middle. But you can see, too, because you're returning to the venous system on the one, so you usually have to put a little clamp or, like, a seat clamp to decrease the amount of flow that's going to, because it's preferential treatment, right? It's going to go to the catheter least resistance. So you're going to flood the venous system if you don't put a little clamp to decrease the amount of flow. Uh -huh. So then you're charting the flow that's going to both locations. Mm -hmm. That's what's written on your pump, too. And you would love the fact that we actually have a little Hoffman clamp in there that you can do, and a flow and the and a flow probe too on the on the bottom, or, you know, so you have a double probe. Yeah. So you can do that. It's important to be able to know like where you're drawing the blood gases from because if you're drawing it from the right radial, you're going to have the deoxygenated blood. But if you don't have a right radial in, you have a left radial or ephemeral that you're drawing out. The gases look mm -hmm. fine, but you're not fine. And not everybody in the ICU understands this. I mean, because it's not. I mean, you teach it all the time, you talk about it all the time, but sometimes they don't really get it. And so, you know, to have... Um, Especially if you keep drawing from the left side, like, oh, it's fine every single time, and then... You just, but it's not. Yeah. Right. It's important for you to be able to then politically, correctly and politically say, hey, you know, maybe we should get a right radial and we should check that gas, mm -hmm. or we should do a cerebral ox, something like that. Yeah. This is like the best way to put a cerebral ox on there, it's going down, but your blood gas will look fine. They're already probably twenty seven. A lot of people think that their pulse ox is broken. Uh -huh. I mean, that's a common, you know, yeah. thing. The thing about the cerebral symmetry, which is what we do in the, in the sim to do that, is that cerebral symmetry is more complicated than just oxygen. Mm -hmm. So if the what's coming out of the head has a high CO2, mm -hmm. guess what? You know, it 
kind of gets a little messy. The other thing we've got just to show you, let's see, the invoice thing. Not sure if we had that or not, but um, you can set the auto regulation, force your box symmetry. So in other words, you you know you can change that and you know where you want to do that. Um, that was I think George injected this. Yeah. Just kind of you know. So it's not you can't. It's not so predictable. The other thing we have that I think is hilarious. Um, let's see. Is the hilarious. Ah, isn't that cool? <laughs> Jeff and Jorge did this. They created this. It's a you know yeah. And I asked Richard, how does this work? Because Robin made one too, but I didn't understand it. It's all this other, you know, all these properties that make for that oxygenator. And he goes, I don't know, Jeff did, Jeff and Jorge did it. And I asked Jorge, I said, how does this work? He goes, I don't know, Jeff did it. Jeff's gone. <laughs> it's like, but, uh, but, it's, but it's all the calculations of how you would, how they design oxygenators. So engineers probably know all this stuff. This is kind of an interesting little Side note, if you, knew, if you knew Jeff, he was just say, yeah, yeah. But be careful because if you play with this, it doesn't save any of these properties. You would, you might want to write, yeah, or at least there's a few in here, I guess. But, you know, but it's kind of a, it's a interesting idea. Um, the other thing too is that you can change, I don't know if you, did you have the, you have the fluid module, the um, fluid module at all? Or? No. It's part of the IV over here, but you can also get to it here. What is that? Um, uh, what is it? So what you can do is um, on the on your screen, you can pull that up. I'm just gonna. Uh, and you can do it on that IV pump, but you can also do it on the fluid panel. Um, you can. If the hematic grit say is, you, know, you can see it over here, so it's 36. Uh -huh. And so if you're going to give, you know, crystalloid, no no hemoglobin, then it's going to add to the uh, blood volume and it's going to dilute, right? So all these are labeled in one or two. You name this, it doesn't matter. But it's either going to add or subtract to the volume, right? And that's over here. It's going to the hematic grit in it. It's going to either be zero or, you know, you can change this. Pack cells might be 60, 65, whatever you, you know. And then the other side is that, you know, if it's blank, so for example, if you just lose blood on the floor, then that blood that's lost is the same hematic grit that you have. Okay. And like throw away or something, you know. So you can you can change that. And this is the, the list that the learner would have access to. And so you could, you know, hit this. Oh, I can't see that. And why don't you give your saline this way? Hit saline up there. That's good. And then hit that little thing. And then put, no, put 1,200 in there. And then hit apply fluid. And it's going to ask, are you sure? You go, yeah. So then it goes in and adds it. And, and, the, and you also see the blood pressure goes up because, the filling, because you increase the CVP. And if you check the... Uh, so it was 36, now it's 28. So it, it's a nice way to teach students, you know, the, how that works and they can play around with it. You can select which ones they, that they have access to. So it's kind of a nice little thing. The, the IV pump, it's just slow, you know, and so, and it doesn't do it, even if you do bolus, it doesn't work well. But you can go back and forth if you want to. The other thing about this one is that you have to add if you're going to do bypass, you have to add prime. You know, ECMO doesn't force you to. For the bypass, you have to fill up the reservoir, and so it just and it calculates that. Just the, and there's a way to remove fluid, so like you could dilute the hematocrit. Is there a way to show the dilutional hematocrit but not cause the increase in blood pressure without messing yeah. with the blood pressure? Well, you could yeah, either, if you could hemoconcentrate if you wanted to. But then when you, then your hematocrit would go back up, so you're dilutional. Right, right. So what do you want to make it do? I'm just thinking, like, when you go on bypass, you're, mm. you're still diluting it with the 1,200 prime, but your blood pressure doesn't shoot up because you're right. diluting right. it with the 1,200 prime and going on bypass. Right, right. So it's... is there a way to dilute it with the prime volume but not cause the pressure to be 139? Be the CVP, be, be drain the volume, you losing the volume. The... Yeah. And when you're going on bypass, mm -hmm. you know, it should drain, you know. And and actually, yeah, you can, you can, you know, you can put it on the floor if you wanted to. And actually, you can. Let's see, what was the thing here? Um, 
you can give them some control over the stuff. So like auto filtration is going to take volume off. I mean, all these are going to add or subtract it. Yeah. 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 And you can do that, you know, and they actually, you can do it to the student because all of a sudden they're on bypass and everything's fine or whatever. And then all of a sudden it drops and you can actually, you know, cause it's on the floor or whatever. And the, uh, yeah. And the cells processor is going to, what is it? Wash cells. That's going to add and the cell processors, things that go into the cell saver or whatever. And then uh, the other thing, I'm not sure if you see this one here. You can actually create your own output here, right? And, and then that actually shows up over here, and it's actually a sort of routine. But this that actually continues whether you're on bypass or not. So all of a sudden, you have Matic or 50 or something, you know, but then you can fix it. But the weird thing is, is that you can't really fix what he just did unless you do a throw away or you do some, you do the opposite process, yeah. which is kind of an interesting little thing. Awesome. Yeah, no, good. Yeah. See, making your own output. You're doing great. Patients alive. A little hypertensive, but what they know. Hey, I'd rather be a 184 than four, right? What is it? Or carding? Carding. You'll be fine. You'll be fine? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like your attitude. Good job. Okay. Good job, guys. Thanks. Did you get a card? Did you get a cube? Did you? Take a card and a cube. I can send them back. Send them back to the shop. Yeah, yeah. Have a safe chips. Yeah. Bye. Did you get some pictures? I did. Did you wonderful? Thank you. Wonderful. You are wonderful. Finished. I think so. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I didn't cuss or anything, did I? No. You have to bleep it if I cussed, huh? Oh, oh, that's okay. I didn't cuss though. <laughs> Uh, we are finishing up with our oh. ECMO uh, breakout session, and uh, thanks for joining us today. I'll end the live stream.